36 hours, it's going to be as tough as nails. And uh, you can probably just claw at it like this and not even move it. Certainly three, four days and it would be fine. Where do I set it when I'm doing this? In some nice warm place in the house where it can just air dry and uh, harden a little bit more. Now another look, let's have another look at all-purpose sealer. All-purpose sealer can be mixed into your background color. So if you wanted something um, in, a, in a color, you can have some paint. You can have some paint. Let's get just a little bit more. And you can have some all-purpose sealer. And you can mix it in multiple ratios. You may brush mix it like this. Just mix it in as you're prepping. Or you can take a palette knife and mix the all-purpose sealer with the paint. If you mix as little as about 10-15% all-purpose sealer into the background color, you have made a paint as hard and as durable as an outdoor paint. And you do not have to varnish it. So say like the inside of a cupboard. Say you're painting a cupboard or you're painting a trunk. I'm going to put just a little bit more in this. And you don't want to have to go back in and varnish it. Uh, just make sure you have at least 10% all-purpose sealer mixed into the color. Now I have here a watercolor block that I like to work out some of my lessons on these. It's a watercolor block and I'm going to base coat it with this paint into which I've mixed all-purpose sealer. And this would be the same as if I was painting a cupboard or a trunk, etc. And with most of the colors you'll still get one coat coverage. I want this, this pretty green. This is called willow because uh, this is a very popular color now. Now again, watch the brush, sweet ones. I'm slip slapping and smoothing. I'm going to slip slap and smooth. Slip slap, smooth. Now in your smoothing when you're on a piece of wood, you smooth with the grain of the wood. But what the slip slap does, let me show you again. Slip, slap, slip, slap, slip, slap, smooth. What the slip slap does is spreads out uh, the heaviness of the paint. See, it spreads it out and then you can smooth it in the direction of the wood grain. But you have product spread more evenly than with just a regular one directional. So again, this is background color. It could be tube color. Slip slap it, smooth it, and on wood with the direction of the wood grain. If you have at least 20, uh, excuse me, about 10% to 15% or more, um, you don't have to uh, do anything to it. You've made a background paint. Now, let me say this. The more all-purpose sealer you put into the paint to make it a background paint, the shinier the background color will become. So I like to work on almost a matte paint and so that's why I'm saying uh, uh, 
you know, 10%. You could have more. Um, and I do this all in one step. Now, there's very little brush stroke. It's because I don't super load the brush. Don't super load the brush. And when you saw me working down the pad, here, this watercolor pad, you saw that I always had a feathery edge. If you always have a feathery edge, you can come back into it from the other direction and you'll not leave a brush mark and it will blend in, okay? And of course, if you have any questions about this, do let us know and we'll try to answer all your questions or uh, hopefully we've had experience with it to where we can help you. So that's backgrounding with all-purpose sealer in the paint. Now, after you've done this and it's dried, you're going to want to sand it. So you wait for it to dry. Dry up there, but not down here. And then I sand it lightly and I'm ready to, to, to paint. If you had uh, a lot of um, maybe uh, areas where you didn't cover quite as well, you saw me go back a little bit and do this you can kind of, it's kind of almost like a dry brushing. You can do that. Uh, you know, one of the beauties of uh, the paint that I'm using, the Chroma paint, is that you get, with almost all your colors, one coat coverage. There's a few that, the, the transparent pigments that you don't. And to me, that's very, very convenient. So you have a one-step preparation. The other thing that I find real nice if I wait now about a half hour to, oh, maybe an hour, and sand it right away, I don't raise as much dust. There's a health issue here. And the all-purpose sealer, if you have at least 10%, it will kind of uh, make little balls of dust instead of being a loose, powdery dust. And you'll be able just to put it on your towel. I always work over a towel. And uh, you're not breathing in the dust. These little balls are too heavy. Try it. Try it and see. And it's a much more healthier way to uh, approach your backgrounding. Mm -hmm.